to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Lord, I am ready for your word. Let it come to bless. Let it come to change. Let it come to transform. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Bible says, and we all with unveiled face, we behold as in a mirror the glory of God. And then the Bible says we are changed, we are transformed from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of God. It says they grow from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is a very powerful one. And I believe that this will be a very strong spiritual arsenal. That you will want to add to the many arsenals that god has granted us access to here remember that our victory in this kingdom within the time and the dispensation that we have to serve the purposes of god is predicated upon the sufficiency of our equipping hallelujah that means that we must sustain the ability to access every spiritual arsenal within our disposal because our lifetime will necessitate one or more of these arsenals and so every time we come before god we must listen for a dimension of truth that will be given to us that will be useful for our destinies hallelujah it's amazing that we're already in november i was thinking about it today and i said can you imagine truly how time flies this is november 2019 january this year and every year is about the most motivated year uh, or motivated months for many people they are inspired challenged pressed to do a lot of things and many times by the time we get to september october november most people are already gassing out and um, so the lord inspired a very powerful teaching in my heart that i believe will bless us in no small way in the name of jesus christ tonight i want to teach on the concept of strength um, it is very powerful what i want to share because these are the kinds of teachings that are applicable to all and sundry these are the teachings that we will need for the now and also in the future um, the goal is to open us up to a very thorough understanding of strength and the role that it plays in a believer's life in his accomplishing the purposes of God. The Bible very clearly reveals scattered through scripture that strength is the fuel of destiny. Please listen very carefully. The Bible reveals again and again that when people get to the end of their destinies, it is proof that they accessed sufficient strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is a very important thing. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Verse 16. 
the whole text runs to 21 but we'll just pick one scripture one verse 16 ephesians 3 please help us paul is praying and speaking to the church in ephesus and he said that he would grant you paul is asking the lord to grant unto the church according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man it's a very powerful prayer the apostle is praying for a people who would later go through all kinds of things the the oppression that would come from emperor nero and others who would come and attack the gospel he was praying for a people who some of them would be matired in their lives he was praying for people who sometimes would lose their lives for the gospel and he said listen i pray that you be strengthened not in your arm in your inner man by the spirit and so we need a lot of strength for the journey of destiny proverbs chapter 21 please proverbs chapter 21 continues to emphasize the need for strength in a believer's journey 21 proverbs 24 i beg your pardon verse 10 proverbs 24 verse 10 it says if thou faint in the day of adversity the diagnosis is that what your strength is small modern cars very modern cars are so equipped that when the fuel is getting to reserve certain features that use the fuel will minimize or stop working is that true the ac may be minimized the capacity as proof that the fuel is going down and when you refill it again you find out that all of those futures are back it's a system of conserving what is left so that the car will not die and the bible says if you faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small the first revelation i want you to get is that among the many days in a man's life there is a day called the day of adversity jesus said this is your hour and the power of darkness it's a message to strengthen the body of christ because for many people our lives and our experiences have not been exactly the best in the midst of all the joy and the celebration there are people right now who have been bereaved there are people right now who um, have lost jobs have lost opportunities i got a text um i think this afternoon or so while i was praying about a family who had been praying for a dead corpse for a few days still believing that that dead body will come back to life now it's very difficult to teach these kinds of things because believers um it is not in in our normal human um it is not a normal desire to want to admit that days like this are part of the days in a man's life it is difficult for you to think that a day can come when you will stand before a corpse of your loved one it is difficult for you to think that one day you will stand and watch your eviction letter from a landlord everybody wants to be positive everybody wants to move forward it is difficult for you to stand and then get a doctor's report that you thought your wife was pregnant and she wasn't pregnant it is difficult to get a report that tells you you have cancer and the cancer is dying your kidney has failed and all of that and most believers are not mentored into the spiritual system allocated by which the saints remain strong are we blessed yes this is the reason why several people when they confront challenges in their lives when they confront things that negate their faith when their prayers and their expectations don't come to pass many are discouraged many are depressed many leave god many even die tonight's message will bless you in no small way and add it to the spiritual archives of your life because for as long as you live you will need it one day hallelujah 
as a man of God, I've had the privilege to weep with many families who have lost their loved ones. People have lost jobs. People have celebrated. People have done all kinds of things. And sometimes it's very difficult to let believers see. And sometimes we preachers, especially for us that God has granted grace to walk in the miraculous and to walk in the truths of the word of God, it's difficult to also create space in our teaching where we help people understand that it is not unusual when believers pass through turbulent times in their lives and their family. It's usually not a message that is very accepted. It is not pleasant. And so when the believer is now sick, when the person now has an accident, when something happens, it becomes difficult to explain. Are we blessed? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Hallelujah. Psalms 46 and then verse 1 to 3. Please write it down. Psalm 46 verse 1 and 3. Look up while I read. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Verse 2. It says, though therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed. Now, I don't know what the psalmist was thinking in his mind. <laughs> but I'm a very creative person. When I read the Bible, I take it seriously. Though the earth be removed. Do you know what that means? That the earth is removed. Then we stand on what? <laughs> Are we together now? He says, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Verse 3. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. He says, God is our refuge and our strength. One more scripture. And then we'll discuss a few things. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi. And this is what he says. I can do all things. But he says I can only do them through the strength that Christ gives. It takes strength to do all things. It takes strength to build a house. It takes strength to build a company. It takes strength to build a marriage. It takes strength to build your spiritual life. It takes strength to go from glory to glory. And Paul is saying, I can only do all things by the strength that Christ supplies. That means outside of that strength, I may not be able to do many things that my destiny require. This is very important. These scriptures all show us that believers need strength. Everybody says strength. In fact, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, it says, but the people, the B part now, that do know their God, one of the rewards for knowing God in a believer's life is strength. Hallelujah. Strength. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. It takes a while for the word of God to prevail over a man's life, for results to begin to be produced. It takes a while for church to grow. It takes a while for the business to grow. That staying power to push and to remain until the word prevails is what many believers lack. And sadly, sometimes we preachers, in a bit to challenge and encourage people, we continue to make people feel that the moment the word of God does not work immediately, something may be wrong with your faith. So when the person cannot pay his or her rent, once the person cannot pay his or her bills, sometimes they get, um, they get into that mold that begin to suggest that they do not love God. It is not so. Strength is required. It is a finisher's requirement in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's discuss the concept of weariness. I studied this and it blessed me in no small way. The Bible lets us know that men can be weary. That the moment you are a mortal man on earth, 
the possibility of exhaustion the possibility of discouragement the possibility of being depressed by the vicissitudes of life is something that can always catch up with you are we together now psalm 23 from verse 1 and verse 3 the reality of weariness psalm 23 it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want and then when you go to verse 2 it says he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters the revelation is in verse 3 he restored my soul that means the soul of a man can need restoration the same way your body needs rest a time can come you are fagged out by all the things that happen in life all men can be weary pay attention to this revelation it is a very powerful one isaiah chapter 40 popular scripture from verse 29 in fact let's start from verse 28 it says has thou not known has thou not heard 40 28 that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is he weary so he's talking about weariness he says there is no searching of his understanding 29 he says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength are we together now so these scriptures show that men can be weary one time jesus carrying the burden of the cross he got to gethsemane and the bible says that he prayed and the prayer was like drops of blood and then from thence he carried the cross and on his way to golgotha at a point he fell down with the cross to the point that they had to get a man called simon of cyrene the nigger to help him leave the cross otherwise he would not be able to get to golgotha are we together now yes moses was weary one time and he said lord i don't know the kind of people you have anointed me to lead these people are stiff-necked people right now i tell them god is saying this they rejoice tomorrow they stand before the sea and they point to me and say moses you are the reason we would have eaten cucumber and and locusts and all of that at least it was better now you are taking us to a supposed promised land we are standing before the red sea and moses said lord you know what please come and handle this your people so men can be weary elijah the prophet when a woman was pursuing him he ran one time and hid and then he didn't know what to do with his life and the guy was tired jonah's own was even a disturbing situation because jonah literally knowing that a man cannot run away from god jonah opted to run and jonah's running was legitimate why was it legitimate he said god i know you are a merciful god after these wicked people finish punishing me i now go and preach they will fast they will repent and you will act you are wasting my time so that i will become the scapegoat and jonah was on his way he now entered a boat caused trouble in the boat and the people casted lots and they said you know what we are going to throw this man out and then right he goes to the belly of the fish men can be weary Elijah was receiving supernatural supplies at Bukcheri. One day the Bible says the brook dried. Hmm. The brook dried. So the reality of the weariness of men is something that we must get used to it. Listen, believers can be exhausted. Know this and let it be factored in your Christian experience as you walk with God. That it is not unspiritual to get to a point in your life where you become exhausted you can be exhausted over your children's school fees a parent one day can look at his child and say ah, why, why did these children how did i even allow these children come and sometimes you feel guilty and you feel bad it is the reality of weariness are we together now yes house rent they slash your salary by half they increase your salary by they increase your house rent by double and you stand before your landlord and you don't know what to tell him what sermon do i now preach to this man my brothers and my sisters let me tell you this 
when believers become weary we must sustain the intelligence on how to navigate you are a man of god you are anointed but nobody is placing a demand on your grace hmm. you go to a crusade and finish preaching you make an altar call after three hours of preaching and only two people stroll out as though they are pitying you they just stroll out and stand and you ask them to pray the salvation prayer they don't even pray it and you stand there lord did you call me or what what is if you didn't call me just tell me i will politely look for something else to do men can be very very weary i remember one time a particular gentleman was preparing for his his marriage and um you know god will make a way pushing things and then a point got it became kai apostle i said just just push forward there is grace i mean the finisher's anointing is a possibility in the kingdom <laughs> but honestly speaking he got to a point where it was about one week to the wedding and uh, the bills were a mountain that were refusing to move and everybody can prophesy and say i saw your wedding happening already but it's true in the realm of the spirit but now the possibilities to make it happen in the physical realm didn't seem to be there and up until four or so days i remember having to call the gentleman and to encourage him and to say look don't worry god is faithful there is god that sits in the heavens many years ago another gentleman was preparing for his marriage and three days to the wedding he refused to go to the city where he would get married yes i mean he just had to just lord i don't know what you would do with me but it's three days to my marriage there are bills house rent i've seen it squash people ministry when you have a crowd of people five thousand ten thousand and then everything begins to go down and you can barely have 500 what happens when these kinds of seasons come in your life praise the lord so weariness is a reality with all men and this is why we need strength now i have identified from scripture two major causes of weariness please pay attention there are two major causes that can make believers any individual to be wary number one according to scripture is hope deferred proverbs chapter 13 please and verse 12 give it to us media let's hurry up hope deferred the bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick but when the desire cometh, it is a tree that can minister life so one of the reasons why people can be exhausted one of the reasons why people can be um discouraged and broken is prolonged expectation listen very carefully hope deferred can literally make the heart the word heart there is spirit the bible says a man's spirit can break not just a human body if your body is broken the doctor can treat it if your soul is broken a therapist can psychologically manage you but when your spirit is broken the bible says no man is able to bear it are we together now hope deferred results that you expect in your life do not come you expected that at age 30 you would have built a house you expected that by the time you have four children you should be financially free you expected that by the time you are 10 years in ministry you should be established and have membership when hope is deferred it can torture the heart are we blessed the number one reason why believers get worried let me tell you this we are beings of results let me use you and we desire advancement everybody say advancement this gentleman there is an instinct in him to continue to make progress that means that this year or this month next year or next month there should be progress by the time an individual is caused whether by life or whatever it is to either retrograde or stagnate it is dangerous the bible says it can do something to you that no man can bear are, are we together now yes there are people who 
you know, reach me and send me text messages and say, Apostle, I am tired and frustrated. I've been in ministry. You know, when this brother was sharing his testimony, I sat back there and I was just nodding my head. Because it is painful when you tell people the call of God is upon your life and there are no results to testify. Results are powerful. Results validate many things. Among them, that you are operating by laws correctly. Among them, that you are in the will of God. So when results, when your life is barren of results, it can do something to your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once prayed with a family that were trusting God for a miracle for their child. They had a child, but the child had a condition that was a very serious thorn in the flesh for the family. Very young boy. I mean, he could go wild and even injure his siblings. Very blessed man, but that thing was just there. And I remember when I wanted to pray for them and I was encouraging them, um, I closed my eyes to pray and then I opened my eyes and I saw the man still looking at me. Now, you may laugh. It's not unbelief. It is what weariness can do to the spirit. How many of you have gone to several men of God for prayer? They've prayed and prophesied and said it is done. And then the next time, I see it here sometimes when I'm praying for people on the queue. Oh Lord, I pray that, and, and the person, you, you know, he's just looking at you and just saying, look, just finish this prayer and let me go. Lazarus had been there three days. And when Jesus came, he said, I know in the resurrection when everything is gone. You know, I've told you that I've been kept a few times in the mortuary alone to pray for dead bodies. And it's an experience that is quite interesting. Because you will stretch your faith and watch a dead body immovable, sometimes already embalmed, and you don't know what to do there. You end up thinking about your own life in that in that mortuary. I mean, that's the most profitable thing you can do because the body is if you tell someone stand up from a wheelchair, at least he can move his leg. It's just that the leg is not strong. But you speak to a dead body and you are even afraid of a dead body answering. <laughs> are we together? If the dead body actually answers, remember the door is closed for security reason. Blessed be God. Hope deferred. Financial expectations. Especially now in Africa and Nigeria. My God. The way this finance thing is doing people. And the kinds of depression. Depression. That someone can just stand by the road. And just look at life. And take a deep breath. Go home. Sit on a chair. And die. Nothing exactly wrong. Just the reality of life. Hallelujah. So we are beings of results. And we are beings of progress. And the moment your life. Listen. Cannot attain unto certain levels of progress. Within an appreciable period of time. It is true that weariness. Can set in. The first reason. Hope deferred prolonged expectations the second reason from scripture why weariness sets into the lives and the destinies of people is called sorrow write it down please sorrow sorrow are we together what is sorrow? A feeling of deep distress. A feeling of deep distress that is caused by losses, caused by disappointments, caused by misfortune. A feeling of deep, dis deep distress caused by loss. Could be loss of a loved one. Could be loss of a job could be disappointment you expected admission like some of you probably 
you expected the final year result to come out with you completely done and now you are seeing an extra year there sorrow and sorrow has symptoms let me list for you two or three of them number one is sadness you can interpret sorrow by the sadness that is in the heart of a man number two you can interpret sorrow or you can discern sorrow by depression human beings just become depressed they have no inspiration to aspire at life again nothing is ever worth their energy or strength sorrow rise up let's pray again it's no use rise up let's build a company again it's no use rise up as the one who is now left to take care of your siblings it's no use sadness depression downheartedness I have met very discouraged uninspired people in this life and I've been shocked and broken by their approach to life they can be on the road passing and a car is honing and it makes no difference to them whether they die or leave as far as they are concerned they are dead there are people like that an example of such a person was Mephibosheth in the Bible Mephibosheth had to come to terms with the reality of his being crippled and the fact that he would never have the opportunity to make any good out of his life again i hope you understand that in the days of mephibosheth there was no technology to draw inspiration from anybody that guy was left there so when king david sent for him hear his response oh king what do you have to do with a dog when a man calls himself a dog let me tell you one of the characteristics of sorrow is you begin to name yourself what god did not call you life can push you down to a point where you start calling yourself what god has not called you i am good for nothing you can tell yourself i cannot amount to anything i am the worst in my family you hear people say I am the black sheep. No inspiration to aspire for a life that is great. People admit defeat and sit back there. And then before you know it, their lives fold. Because they do not sustain a superior revelation again. There are people who have packed up ministry. And just said, you know what? This ministry thing, I quit. It's over. I've tried there are people who have packed up businesses after failing 10 15 times they just say you know what i've done my best there are people who have given up on their children i'm sorry i can't pay your school fees i can't take care of you do whatever you want to do with your life sorrow is a very serious thing i've had the opportunity to comfort families that have lost loved ones and sometimes no matter what you are saying the mother or the father is just looking at you they want to believe what you are saying they hope one day they will believe it but for that moment they don't are we together yes i think the admission list just came out or so for i think abu or i don't know which of the institutions and there were people who probably didn't get admission in the list that was released and some of them continued i i read some of their text messages and honestly tears were almost coming to my eyes because some of them said apostle 11 years apostle seven years apostle this one this one sorrow is a reason why weariness can eat a man like a cancer and you become a shadow of yourself because you are sorrowful so hope deferred and sorrow are two biblical causes of the weariness in men no wonder our world today is filled with depressed men medical people will tell you the volumes of drugs that are consumed especially by men do you know why because the inability to be able to provide the inability to be able to be there sometimes can so discourage the man he stands and says well i know i'm good for nothing 
I know I'm not able to take care of my wife and family. And because of that, they draw conclusions. And like Mephibosheth, even when the king is calling, they say, don't call a dog, call men. I am a dog. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve. Serve you with my life. Serve you with my worship. You made me to see that your right hand, but I choose to bow. Bow in worship. Bow in worship. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve. To serve you with my life. To serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow. To bow in worship, bow in worship. There are times that you're reducing yourself is to honor God. But there are times that reducing yourself is because life has made you so. Life has beaten you to a point where you do not see that you can stand again. There are times when you are a king but you put your golden crown so that you will worship. But there are times it is not worship. It is just life that has hit you down. There are times you go on your knees because you are worshipping God. But there are times you go on your knees because you do not see any hope in life again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You made me grow royalty but i choose to serve to serve you with my life to serve you in worship you made me to sit at your right hand but i choose to bow but i choose to bow bow my heart I will never forget many years ago when one of our precious ones in this ministry went to be with the Lord. She was a leader, served God with all her heart, loved God. She was so dear to me. I loved her with my whole heart. And she quickly just went to do something and returned back. And I remember. I was counseling someone when a call comes to me and then my attention is needed and then they break the news that this my most precious precious daughter has transited to go to be with the Lord I remember how I thought about it and I said oh boy I remember when God granted me the privilege to visit with the family and I held the mother and the mother began to sing and the mother began to encourage us and the mother began to rejoice I said stamina that's what it's called you know a man's level of spiritual dexterity not when things are happening but sometimes is when nothing is happening do you have the staying power when the word of the Lord is yet to come through in your life. Do you have the staying power when the church has not opened up? Do you have the staying power when you are fasting and praying and the anointing does not seem to come upon your head? You watch all your colleagues and contemporaries already walking in certain dimensions, but for you, it is not there. You watch all your colleagues with jobs, some of them becoming managers, and here you are, after 15, 17 years, you are still looking for a job. Weariness, sorrow can set in. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. 
let me teach you very quickly before we pray how to be strengthened in this kingdom i show you keys that you will hold and your life will remain an unending wonder i show you keys that you will hold and you will defeat life and beat it at its game how to be strengthened number one the first key to draw strength in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God write it down the first key that is allocated by which we draw strength from in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God first John chapter 3 and verse 1 we'll look at a few scriptures very quickly first John chapter 3 and verse 1 behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not behold what manner of love let me tell you something the revelation of the love of God is therapeutic is a wonder that when you stand and look at life and the awareness that the monarch of the universe has invested his love upon you is a revelation that if understood can change your life hallelujah people have received calls from presidents people have received calls from diplomats i've had a few calls in my life from great people prominent people and i can tell the excitement in my heart wow this person that person was able to reach out to me i mean it, it's very comforting and blessing when the great reach out to you it does something that is comforting and healing and then the monarch of the universe looks down on you no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me it's a revelation you must have there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me is found in Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 powerful revelation in a world of wickedness in a world of selfishness in a world that is governed by interest it is a revelation to know Jeremiah what did I say chapter please search for me I hope we got it right I have loved thee with an everlasting love that's right therefore with loving kindness have i drawn thee it's a revelation after the grace this my adorable children will be here lined up to give me a wonderful hug and how i've so missed them and every time i hug every one of these children i look at their eyes and i see the confidence they have in fatherhood this is what the Bible is saying. I have loved thee. Do you know what it means to have an everlasting love? I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Huh. This is the God of heaven. Believers, hear me. 
you will draw strength for the journey for your ministry for your life for your children when you understand this it is true would you dance with me your my soul to the song of all songs preacher hear me businessman hear me dance with me the song of all songs powerful revelation the bible says in first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 that eyes have not seen koinonia hear me god is comforting someone yes have not heard neither has it been revealed to the heart of any man what god has in store for them that love him there is a dealing with god that is in the realm of lovers that god loves you so much he can sit down and think about you and plan something for your life that will make you a wonder and a shock please do not forget that when it comes to the sovereignty of god god is not a man is a revelation i want you to hear god is not limited by the limitations of men men are limited in knowledge men are limited in time men are limited in strength but there is one who is called the monarch of the universe and that when he decides to stand up and bless you and lift you he will supply the strength and he will lift you the same way you press a button and a lift begins to rise Is someone being edified tonight the revelation of the love of God Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 says for we know we are privy to an information in the in the kingdom we know that all things not some things all things work together please hear me you lost a loved one I know it is painful but hear me you lost money you lost business your expectations disappointed let me tell you we know they may not know but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the call everything in a man's life is navigated by the love of God to square up to purpose and destiny this is the wonder of the love of God hallelujah mm. Moses ran away from the Egyptians and he went to the backside of the mountain thinking he was running away from Egypt he did not know he was running to the place of encounter where he will meet the burning bush mm. very powerful it's amazing how God navigates men through the path of destiny it's amazing how many times you don't even know you are led yet you are led in the midst of your confusion the finger of the ancient of days is upon you in the midst of your cluelessness about life yet he is guiding you by his spirit and then when you see the wonder of his intelligence you will stand back and join people and say you are truly the monarch of the universe i have seen this with my life this is how koinonia started i have seen this at different seasons of my life let me tell you something do not stand the way of the wisdom of god over a man that he loves do not stand the way of the wisdom of god the intelligence of god is so thorough he ensures that you win the love of god everybody say the love of god let it be a revelation that is in your heart don't give room and allow the devil to take advantage of your life and spy upon your liberty no stand in the strength of the revelation of the love of god for we know look at this one day you will need this scripture sooner or later for we know man of god hear me for we know businessman father 
for we know apostle i lost my father and my mother this year i know it is painful it doesn't make sense but watch the intelligence of the one who designed the heavens and the earth listen anytime your life looks clueless tell yourself keep watching i've never had the opportunity to be okay well i had once i'm confessing now once in a drama group when i was in primary school so fortunate i acted a rich man i will never tell you the name i know how bad you people are you will not forget the name when i say it. they called me a wonderful name they gave me pieces of paper and leaves i was a politician in that drama i would spray money and people would clap for me and so on and so forth that was the only time i remember okay well and then a few other christmas dramas here and there but there's something i know about acting that there is someone called a movie director the movie director is the one invested with the intelligence of producing that movie sometimes the actors do not even understand the stretch they just know that in that movie you are acting you you will die <laughs> in jesus name sam is refusing <laughs> you, you will not die in jesus name are we together now yes do you know what it means to be mindful of a man that means you sit down and invest your thought to understand this you must understand architecture while you are talking to an architect he's thinking okay so what do you want i want a house let me prophesy someone's house already i want oh, sit down sit down canal people we are dealing with serious issues this night are we together and you are telling the architect okay i needed a duplex i need three parlors one for business one for family one for this i need a kitchen as large as a living room i need this and while you are describing it the architect watch this the architect is intelligently he's he's adding imagery to what you are saying and even things you want that you don't know by reason of his experience he now he's 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 filtering your amateur communication and he's adding his intelligence on it this is what this guy meant to say while you are talking your heart too is talking and he's listening to both of them and capturing them in the design of that house when he's done and he brings you and you stand you say if i were to draw it it would not look like this beauty glory elegance this is what the bible means that when god sits down in designing your destiny he designs it thoroughly with his intelligence he designs it in such a way that insists that you arrive have you seen architects design buildings and later on they find out that ah this soil the topography is not conducive and they say no problem they have to make adjustments but that building must come out i'm speaking to someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god the blueprint and the design for your destiny it must be actualized in your lifetime in the name of jesus the son of the living god please sit down sit down every building does not look like it till it's finished every preacher does not look like it till god is done with him every worshiper does not look like it everybody say the love of god it's a powerful revelation that God loves me you know I have I think in the last I don't know how many years now it has become a deep revelation some sometimes I think in life eh, as you grow in ministry in leadership and in age certain truths of Scripture begin to crystallize in you again are, are we getting blessed please settle with the love of God because there are some of you here look at me your fathers your mothers your loved ones and everybody has concluded about you and you may not know the effect of that thing in your life until you get to a point where you just say can anything good come out of Nazareth but the love of God oh the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of god oh he chases me listen 
Listen to what you are singing. Always chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. That's strange. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Look what God is doing in this ministry. Look what God is doing in our lives. I continue to watch people as they grow in the spirit. I continue to watch people transit like from egg, lava, pupa, adult. From a little shrub, God is making many of us to become giants. It does not look like it, but be patient with God. And watch the wisdom, I say it again, of the ancient of days. It's a name he has to himself. The revelation of the love of God. Let's hurry up so that we can pray. Number two. The second way to be comforted. The second way to be strengthened. As a believer. Is the comfort of scripture. Please write it down. Make sure you are writing. Number one is the revelation of the love of God. How we are strengthened. Number two is the comfort of scripture. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Romans 15, please, and verse 4. Look up, please, if you can. And let's read together. One, two, read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, uh -huh, that we through patience and comfort of Scripture might find hope. Do you know what this means? Let me interpret this to you. The meaning of this is that there is nothing new under the sun and that the Bible has captured different experiences that can play in your life and has already given you a preview of how the end looks like. So that by the comfort of scripture, when for instance you are bereaved, you may not know if tomorrow will ever come, but you can open scripture and see someone who was bereaved and see how the person survived after it and you would draw strength from it. It's not called scripture. It's called the comfort of scripture. Job was a man in the Bible who is a classic example of a man going down to the lowest and rising back to the highest. Job in one day I'm not sure any man on earth has gone through that kind of experience. In one day, a man loses his daughters. In one day, a man loses his sons. In one day, a man loses his estates and his businesses. In one day, a man loses all of this. And then, before Job will finish coping with the sheer stress, his health is now affected. Boils begin to come. Dogs will come and lick the boils of Job. Many saw Job and said, oh dear, once great Job. And here he's sitting, only with the comfort of his wife. And watch this. God began to make a boast of Job in the heavenlies. And by the time we get to chapter 42, hallelujah, the Bible says, verse 10, that and God restored the fortunes of Job suddenly people began to come from everywhere and bring gift and the bible said all of them held a bag of money and gave him let me speak to someone the concept of things being over is not real did you hear what i said there is no such thing as it is over with god god can the worst thing that can happen is death resurrection is proof that god has conquered the power of death hallelujah Please fan your dream alive. Fan your anointing alive. Get back and open the books that you wrote visions. I will be a great worshiper. I will sing to the nations. Men may not invite me now, but in the name of Jesus, I find comfort in scripture that for a long time, David was in the wilderness, but a day came, he appeared before Saul. Your soul will call you for sure one day. So David, continue to learn how to play. They may not invite you, but stay until the season of appearing comes it is true apostle we've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb 10 years 15 years through the comfort of scripture 
God refers you to go to the patriarch, Father Abraham, and see what 25 years of endurance produced. And when Abraham finally held Isaac, they laughed and said, All who hear will laugh with me. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace undeniable. There's no need to cry cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Psalms 119 verse 28. Please sit down. Want us to pray tonight? Psalms 119 verse 28. Please make sure you are writing these scriptures. You can comfort someone with it after service. You can minister to your family member. You can go and fast with this scripture and pray. My soul melted for heaviness. It says strengthen thou me according to your word use your word to strengthen me i cannot pay the rent now but use your word to strengthen me use your word to strengthen me i don't know where the finances will come from use your word to strengthen me my mother has been diagnosed of an incurable disease use your word to strengthen me i just lost a job use your word to strengthen me i don't know how the future looks like the word is a strengthener it not only gives information we find hope in it are we blessed yes the comfort of scripture number three the third way that we are strengthened in this kingdom is by a direct impartation and an infusion of strength from the Lord directly God can stand up in his might and majesty and impart strength upon a man. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me he said stand up and he said I have no strength and his spirit entered and speak upon my feet and he stood so God can directly impart and infuse strength second scripture very quickly let's hurry up I want us to pray Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren. So he's talking to believers. They who are of the fold. Finally, my brethren. Be strong. Not in your bank account. No. Be strong. Not in your uncle or auntie. Be strong. Not in your pastor or prophet or apostle or teacher. Be strong. Not in your father or mother. Be strong. Not in your certificate or your gift. He said be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Amplified puts it in a very powerful way. If you can give it to us. If that is possible. Let's just look at Amplified. He said in conclusion. 
be strong in the Lord be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides draw strength to draw from you again again we've come to draw 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 from you again, again. I've come to draw. I've come to draw. Draw, draw, draw from you again. Impartation, impartation, impartation. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, we already read that scripture. It's very, very important. You can draw strength from him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, please. Let's look at it very quickly. Paul was crying to the Lord and asking him for help. Paul was weary. And here was the response of the Lord. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you and here's the technology for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore i would rather glory in my infirmities paul is saying that the power of christ may rest upon me verse 10 therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake for when i am weak mysteriously i am strong are we together god can impart strength upon you god can impart strength he can you can receive a surge of strength and may that happen to someone tonight that every door you have closed over your life and your destiny you will go back and say destiny let's continue from where we stopped four years ago from where we stopped five years ago let me give us the last and then we'll pray i want us to take some time to pray how are believers strengthened in this kingdom the fourth way is joy the joy of the lord nehemiah chapter 8 and verse strength neither be ye dismayed or sorry or in pity it says for the joy of the Lord is not will be not was is present reality your strength neither be ye sorry for the joy of the lord don't pack up your life don't wrap up your ministry don't wrap up your business don't wrap up your endeavor for the joy of the lord is your strength philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says rejoice in the lord always I used to think he said always but that's not what he said always as you go rejoice all the way any road and any place you find yourself let your disposition be that of joy rejoice in the Lord always and again I repeat rejoice why because in this kingdom you see my brothers and my sisters joy is like a fetcher that is what you use to draw from the wells of salvation when you lose joy there are many things that will not come to your life in fact the bible puts it this way it says they that sow in tears it didn't say they will reap with joy he said they will reap in joy you will eat inside a kitchen so if you are not in that kitchen there's no meal you will reap in joy Psalm 67, we'll start from verse 1. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Say amen. amen. Verse 2. 
that thy way may be known in the earth thy saving health among the nations next verse let the people praise thee oh god let all the people praise thee yes please oh let the nations be glad and sing for joy for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth five let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee uh-huh then shall the earth the increase that has always been there but has refused to come out that in praise and joy the earth shall yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us listen to me you have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of remaining joyful you have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of being unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life joy all the way joy all the way you stand before the coffin with tears coming out of your eyes but you raise a song of praise and worship you go to your atm and check and your balance is 1500 naira and it looks like you've not done anything with your life you stand before your board and you see five carryovers and it looks like there's no hope of moving forward please hear me hear me hear me let life always find you in joy joy is a choice joy is a choice you can choose to walk in joy it's a choice the joy of the Lord is my strength choose to walk in joy let me tell you this and this is something that gradually the continent of Africa and Nigeria is losing because we were one time purported to be the happiest people on earth but right now the spirit of depression is just coming round horizon you see young people looking as if they are old joyless people people who look dried like a fig tree what happened why should i rejoice look at the way my life is no sir to him that is joined to the living there is hope there is reason to be joyful are you hearing what i'm saying the bible talks about people talks about all kinds of circumstances happening and people dry up because there is no joy in the midst of them when you are joyful joy brings songs of worship when you are joyful it brings expressions of strength of hope and of peace joy is so powerful that it was used as one of the indices that verify and attest to the presence of the kingdom that when the kingdom of god is in a place meaning when his will is being done it will be characterized by the tripartite realities of righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost a state of merriment a state of excitement that is based on a revelation listen to me the revelation is i will joy in the god of my salvation there is a redeemer that is coming there is the lifter of men that is coming there is the anointer of men that is coming so although the fig tree may not blossom although there may not be olives on the vine although all of these things left and right may not seem to be manifest in the way you want you draw joy in the knowledge that there is a name that god is called the god of your salvation do you know what that means imagine a house burning and while you are looking at everything born you look at it and a time will come you will stop crying and you will start finding comfort the house was insured there is an insurance company that insured the house 
that means now that the house is bond it is time for your insurance to speak for you you have an agreement with them that for as long as you continue to pay your premium that when a disaster strikes they will take responsibility it is a mandate they have placed upon themselves so while you are watching your house bond you are regretting what is being born there you suddenly draw strength there is an insurance are you getting what i'm saying now that's what it means to rejoice in the god of your salvation the god of your salvation the word savior is the hebrew word jehoshua that's where you get the word joshua from the god that saves the one who saves are you getting what i'm teaching you tonight it's very very important so you stand and then you draw strength the insurance company is coming and when you call on the insurance company they come to stand and look at the building and value it and within months your building is back and not only back better what you wanted to put in before that you could not put now you have your chance you wanted to put two parlors before but the rigor of removing things now everything is burnt and now you have the opportunity to partition the house well and put the living room god is speaking to someone joy please be careful guard your joy the same way a wealthy person protects a rolex in a safe guard your joy the same way a lecturer protects his certificate guard your joy the same way money is guarded in a bulk room in a bank protect your joy by all means protect your joy by all means it is your strength in this kingdom it is your staying power it is the guarantee that you will finish strong are we together yes so number one to be strengthened the revelation of the love of god number two the comfort of scripture you see look up please look up if you are a believer <coughs> if you are a believer and your word study life is not effective please obtain grace from god tonight to take your word study seriously because when life squeezes you it is it is written that will come out the word of god let it become your daily bread not one one verse per day no you should grow past that sit down with scripture study it it's like a deposit you are making the day you stand before goliath there is a scripture the day you stand before pharaoh there is a scripture the day you stand before saul there is a scripture the day satan himself comes to you there is a scripture the word of god and then number three the impartation direct impartation i believe that god will do this to our lives even as we pray a direct impartation of scripture and then number four joy koinonia access this mystery of joy like a river listen to me please listen to me life 24 hours already has by default programmed in it too many things to annoy you you will age yourself to death if you hand your life over to life to treat you you must define your possibilities the days that we live in now are days that joy must be a choice switch on your television and in five minutes you have had something that annoyed you you must choose to maintain your joy go to visit your child in school and you will see a teacher treating the child in a way you are waiting for your child to return with a white result and you will see something that does not bring you encouragement hear me any other thing you base for your joy will disappoint you it must be the joy of the lord as your strength as god comforted someone tonight the joy of the lord choose to be happy you receive a call from home 
are you aware of the the kind of i mean there's no money anywhere we are going to die and you say mommy calm down why should i calm down because god is still the monarch of the universe there is always a way out two of you cannot be under pressure you choose to be under pressure or god under pressure he says the keeper of israel the keeper of the covenant not a person that means listen when cgc is locked the key is with someone if that person does not come we're in trouble so when we want to access a place the keeper of the key is important so when the bible said the keeper of israel you would think he's talking about the nation no israel means covenant there is the keeper of the covenant of my destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of your destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of koinonia there is the keeper of the covenant of the prophecy upon your life see let me tell you this look at me satan is a roaring lion if you allow his roar scare you you will never be able to defeat the lion and cut the head and move. No, 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 no. Life will stand and claim bold face for you. You must sustain the intelligence in the spirit to say with joy will I draw. They see you bending for a long time and wonder what you are doing. And all of a sudden you draw out prosperity, speed, increase, lifting, and while you draw it out people will just stand and say what is this the joy of the lord you're the god of awesome wonders i've tasted of your power Much more than I deserve. Help me. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard the wonders of creation. song I love. The words you speak, come on. The words you speak, the things around your treasure have lifted me. You took away the chains and cards that had me down. Listen to me it is in your lifetime you will build that house if it's in your lifetime a day will come you will not think about money again it is in your lifetime the anointing you seek one day you will no longer seek it because it's with you listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is in your lifetime that you will smile again there is a name God is called the God of Jeshuron he's called the one that rides upon the wings of the wind let God be true and let every man, let every report, medical report, let every system be a liar. Let God be true and let every ministry report be a liar. Let God be true and let every academic report be a liar. Let God be true and let every financial report be a liar. Let God be true. And every career report be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. Many years ago, I remember one day I was sitting down somewhere in the campus and I saw a plane pass and I was looking at it and the Lord told me that the word 
will take you into that plane many times. I believed him. The Lord spoke to me that a time will come, nations will come and will drink from that which he has put upon our lives. I believed him. Listen, you have gone too far with God to turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Husband and wife, remember Lot's wife. CEOs, businessmen, remember Lot's wife. Men and women of God, remember Lot's wife. That if you turn aside in the bay of battle, your strength is small. You must obtain grace to fight till you win. You must obtain grace. Listen. Obtain grace to stand and face your fears. Fight and win. Oh, they say you have cancer. Oh, they say your genotype will never change. That's nonsense. Obtain grace from God. Oh, they say your children will never be responsible. Oh, they say your life is finished. See, let God be true. I'm teaching you how to win in life. You must immerse yourself. Because the kinds, the kinds of environment that Africa is brooding, the kinds of environment that Nigeria is brooding is pungent i say that respectfully is pungent for greatness from television to internet to everywhere there's all kinds of nonsense that jam packs your ear sometimes you need to say hey when the music fades and i simply come we must be that generation you can shut away from the noise Longing just to free something that's a word that will bless your heart. There are times you need to off the TV, shut the laptop. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. Is that what you have required? It is within his power to make great and live. You search much deeper within to the way You looking into my heart. You are worshiping the one who sees into the heart of man. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about it's all about you. It's all about it's all about you. It's all about please listen to what you are saying it's, it's all, all about, about you it's all about you jesus you are still going to sing this song and then we'll pray it's nine we'll pray for a few minutes listen listen when you make it about your sickness benny Hinn was and, and you know, I, I follow him a lot. And Ben Hinn was teaching in one of his healing sessions. And he said he found out that those who receive from God are people who learn to forget about themselves. The moment you are conscious about yourself, the mountains magnify. They looked unto him. There was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And they looked unto him. Barus Kaliata and they were their faces were lightened illumination and god took shame and fear from their lives tonight we are going to sing that song again please take it higher for me listen sometimes we need to remind ourselves and remind our generation that it is all about jesus and i the ministry is about jesus the business is about Jesus because sometimes you can be trying to make money and the devil looks at you and says you are a money monger you need to remind yourself and remind Satan 
that this is all about Jesus there are times listen to me that you will look at your children and sometimes you will put your ego on the line and he reminds you that it's not about your children it's about Jesus there is peace and rest when everything becomes about him nothing else matters nothing in this world will do listen for jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you jesus you koinonia hear me when god chooses to lift you it's a choice he made when god chooses to honor you it's a choice he made god chose to speak to us that this year is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and you may say apostle we are just in november you know how long it takes for god to do something as long as his will allows if his will says now that's how long it will take you are willing and able please listen to what i'm telling you because you see satan is a seeker of attention satan is a seeker of time he seeks time using all kinds of distractions in your life and if you do not sustain the ability to set your eyes like a flint you will never be able to raise your children you will never be able to pay the bills you will never listen let me tell you see hear me when god becomes the center of your focus you keep looking at him and setting your gaze on him and you will not know when you are rising you will check and find out that you are not where you used to be again are you hearing what i'm saying now please hold the hands of someone by your left and by your right at the center of it all is you that i see is you that i see at the center of it all it's you that i see it's you it's you that i see there is power in your name ah. miracles miracles happen in your name As we lift our voice and pray, it's you, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning to pray at about 3 a.m. Now listen, we are going to pray. And when I woke up, I was just walking around. I was not even praying. And the next thing, the Lord told me, "Go on your knees." I just rested on the chair and I was in the spirit and the strange thing was I saw the level of speed things were unfolding in people's lives just like a new season listen listen I want to hear what I'm telling you I saw people buying vehicles getting houses moving I mean listen listen I, I mean what I'm saying you know how how do I put it now um, there's this thing in a when you you have a, a any digital device and you are fast forwarding you can adjust the fast forwarding listen to me i was in the spirit when i saw this i was watching like a drama and then every time seasons are opening one of the ways there are many ways god shows me one either in a military military attire or number two the page of a book opening and suddenly I saw the page of a book opening immediately I saw this I came back and that's why the Lord told me to bring this message let me tell you my brothers and my sisters new seasons always don't look like it but for those who have strength 
Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit. Pray. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. We're going to pray. And the first prayer point tonight is you are going to judge God faithful. Take your eyes away from whatever has not happened or has happened and judge him faithful. Lift your voice and say, Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful. Both for the things you have done and the things that look like I'm not Faithful God. Is someone praying? We judge you faithful. Saints of God pray Mighty ones pray Those who have been favored by the ancient one Pray Faithful God, ah. hallelujah. Eh, eh, eh. hallelujah, you're the faithful God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. To be faithful means to possess the quality of consistency. To be faithful means to possess the quality of unbendableness. To be faithful means to possess the quality of integrity, predictability, sameness. And there is a name God is called faithful and true. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I judge you faithful. Shake it you are consistent. I trust your faithfulness. Please help those under the anointing. I judge you faithful. I judge you faithful. Consistent. Unchanging. Unbending. Unchangeable God, unchangeable, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable, unchangeable, reliable God. 
Jesus the same yesterday the same today the same forever we pray you're not a man, oh, you're not a man, oh, you're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, oh, you're not a man, oh, you're the God of everything, no one like you. Number two, there is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. No system can say with power to say. I'm establishing the second prayer point. There is only one name. There is only one day with power to save. With power to save. Our God, our God, champion, he's champion. point lord you are my salvation shift me to my destiny push me to prophecy lift your voice and pray let my life see your salvation is someone praying God of my salvation and I like a mighty man that you are the God of my the God of my glory arise like a mighty God that you are God of my lifting God of my rejoicing arise like a mighty man that you are The Bible says salvation belongs to the Lord. It is within his power to make rich. It is within his power to bless. It is within his power to lift. When God points at a man and says, this is my city to lift, there is nothing that can be done under the surface of the earth. Listen to me. Salvation does not just mean salvation from sin and Satan. 
it is the word soteria it is also the word sozo are we together now soteria means to be grafted out into honor is a translation a shift of realms a shift of dimension a shift of reality a shift of results soteria when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the lord has done great things for them he says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev it is within his power prayer point number three atmosphere she now says be broken is open before me but many are the adversaries it is within your power to dislodge the spirits program to hold destinies the stargazers over the destinies of men it is within your power lift your voice like a priest and pray tonight i command power i command devils spirits look at me Satan will not fold his arms and let you raise godly children Satan will not fold his arms and watch your ministry expand 
Satan will not fold his arms and watch the wealth of the kingdom come upon you, knowing that you have the mindset that promotes Christ. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your marriage. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your family. You are going to decree. You are going to create. I like you to rebuke the devil. Command these powers. Give way. Give way. Give way. Give way by the spirit. Command every force that is not of the Christ over your prophecy, over your life, over your destiny. By the blood of the eternal covenant, by the name of the Hallelujah. Now listen, the last prayer point and we're done tonight. One of the ways that we know God is through the dimensions that he has revealed. He is healer. He is lifter. He is restorer. He broke himself into these dimensions so that the day you need that dimension of him, you can provoke it. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your Hewa hey, your Hewa hey, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. One more time. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Hey, just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. This is what you are saying. Let the reign of restoration come because you are the restorer. Let the, hold on. Let the reign of revival come. Because you are. Let the reign of grace. When you pray, listen. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 15, I think, and verse 32 or so, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high, then any man's desert can be turned for a fruitful vine. Any desert can be turned for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine be turned to a forest. But the secret is that shower. So when you say, Lord, don't just send help. Send your name. Yes, sir. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run and they are safe. The name of the Lord is security. The name of the Lord is defense. The name of the Lord is speed. The name of the Lord is restoration. The name of the Lord is deliverance. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. You are going to mention every dimension of the name of God that you need in this season to push you into prophecy. If it's restoration, call it. If it's healing, call it. If it's a miracle worker, call it. Lift your voice and pray. I will answer. Call on to me. And I 
I will answer. I will show you what a mighty thing is. Let him restore your joy. Let him restore your prosperity. Let him restore your peace. Though your beginning be small, let your latter end. Call on the one who is the maker. Can make me. Call on the one who is the lifter. Hallelujah. The names of God. He can be healer. He can be restorer. He can be deliverer. Whatever it is that you need is covered in his name. His covenant name. Y-H-W-H Yahweh is his personal name. Hey. Hallelujah. Listen. Please hear me. There is a name of God that can take you from where you are now to where prophecy demands you should be. You must find that name. Find it in prayer. For some of you, it is the lifter. For some of you, it is the restorer. For some of you, it is the deliverer. For some of you, it is the mighty man in battle. For some of you, it is Ebenezer. For some of you, it is El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. For some of you, it is the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Listen, let me add one more prayer. I apologize, our time is gone. You're going to pray, Lord, let nothing in my life steal my joy. Listen to me, hear me. Soon we're going to be wrapping up Koinonia now, and many of you will return home. Many of you are already, some of our people have left, gone for various reasons. Some are finishing their exams, they're going. And let me tell you something. The world that we live in today, unfortunately, is saddled with all kinds of negative things. From reports from family, health reports, reports of statistics, reports of all kinds of findings. And you are embedded in a system that is full of all of these things. And most of them are complete nonsense. As far as your destiny and God's program is concerned, you will need to trust God for joy. Joy guard joy jealously some of you have lost your joy you walk with gloominess as if life has pressed you down can i tell you something listen to me the joy of the lord is real strength once you sustain joy you will watch your life continue to rise the joy of the lord is what guarantees harvest the joy of the lord is what guarantees finishing I took this Bible and I found out that there was both Genesis and Revelation. And at the end of it, God is still seated on the throne. On no account, in this Bible, kings had to, re, to relinquish their thrones. In this Bible, queens had to relinquish their thrones. In this Bible, nations had to relinquish their territory. But from Genesis to Revelation, there is an ancient one that remains seated. As proof that he is the monarch of the universe are we together so my soul find rest in the fact that there is the name of God pray that last prayer and we'll wrap up this session Lord joy let there be joy overflowing right now no room for sadness no no room for joy. In the joy of the Lord. The joy that is. Joy that comes from. 
joy that is in the power the the joy. Lord, no matter what report I get from home, your joy remains with me. No matter what report I get in my office, my joy remains with me. No matter what results I see in my business in ministry, joy. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May the revelation of this teaching that I shared with you provide tremendous strength for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every lie of the devil over your destiny, every lie of Satan over your life, every lie of satan over your home over your family over your children over your finances over your spiritual life i decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ that lie goes down and goes down forever i pray for you for those of you who have lost the strength and the fortitude to continue in ministry in life tonight like the dew of Hammon, I pray let fresh strength be infused upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for any and everyone here who is being resisted by Satan by causes by yokes by activities of divination and the plots of evil I declare by the God of heaven I command and establish your liberty this night in the name of Jesus I speak to you by the Spirit of the Living God that everything God has spoken in your life he will cause you to be so aligned that it must come to pass I pray finally for your family I pray for your children I pray for your job I pray for whatever it is you're doing let the anointing and the grace for extraordinary fruitfulness the grace that commands strange favor the grace that commands open door and influence and lifting may that grace rest upon you finally I pray for the eyes of your spirit I pray for your ears in the name that is above all names the clarity and the accuracy of perception as far as your purpose is concerned receive it now of his divine nature praise the lord now there are seven gospels that the bible please listen we'll get back to our text for tonight but there are seven gospels that are communicated in scripture and the very first of them in order of priority is called the gospel of salvation please say after me the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love john chapter 3 and verse 6 16 for god so loved the world a revelation of the father's love demonstrated by and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus please understand the gospel of salvation the father god so loved the world that was his motivation his motivation was love his motivation was not power his motivation was love his motivation was not influence his motivation was love not self so for god so loved the world and he proved that love by giving Jesus his son. Are we together? You will be surprised that many believers don't even know about this story. That God so loved the world and he gave Jesus. Why did he give Jesus? Not just so that we will be saved. Jesus came as many things. Number one, he came as an example of what it means to be led by the spirit because that's the condition to be a son of god so he came as a sample until then no one had demonstrated sonship to the degree that satisfied the heart of the father are we together now so jesus came 
to show us the way to please the father jesus came as a substitute he eventually will be a substitute in what we call his passion the journey that started from the upper room where the communion was that's not what i'm teaching tonight it's just important for us to have this background that the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus did not start on the cross he started on the upper room then the upper room and then from there to gethsemane and then the cross and then the grave and then the throne not the sky remember the song says from the grave to the sky no from the grave right to the throne the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand not hang around the air until i know what to do with you the lord there was a real coronation service that happened are we together but the story is not really where it's not the point of advantage it is the opportunity for man to understand that message and respond to it that whosoever beautiful statement whosoever there are some things in scripture that are not for whosoever therefore there are specific conditions but when it has to do with the substitutionary sacrifice of christ he says whosoever believes in him should not perish but have zoe not just life everlasting not just eternal life but the life of god are we together so that that's the privilege um, that we stand to enjoy and then in addition to that we are now open please listen in addition to just receiving the life of god we have become one with him by the spirit these are the basic doctrines of the christian faith you are not a christian if you don't understand this doesn't matter if you can raise the dead if you do not understand these foundational truths these are the pillars of the christian faith praise the lord then we now begin to explore in detail the advantage listen to my communication the advantage of jesus in our life there is there is a real advantage and one of it paul was teaching the church in ephesus chapter one please give it to us again media verse three he now says blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which lord jesus christ jesus christ who died and now had become lord that's why you see the word lord jesus christ the lord the master the exalted jesus christ not just the one that walked upon the earth the one who is now exalted who had blessed us are you seeing he didn't just die so the father through jesus had blessed us with all spiritual blessings but the nature of this blessing is that they are spiritual in context they reside in the heavenly places and that you will only access them through christ meaning if you do not encounter jesus christ you cannot have these blessings there are many believers who do not love jesus and are not interested in him but will continue to insist that they must partake of everything that has to do with the faith life it starts with jesus it starts with jesus the alpha remember our teaching the omega alpha omega starts with jesus so let's go to first peter now chapter two celebrating easter is useless until we are able to understand the advantage of that which christ has done and to engage with understanding the systems that will bring us into that experience so we continue to press by faith as faithful students in the school of the spirit trusting the holy spirit to guide us day by day and hour by hour to a point of comprehension where we will know god desires that we know and that we walk in the experience of that knowledge first peter chapter 2 from verse 9 let's read together one to read but ye are a chosen generation uh -huh. a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people stop 
Peter the apostle is teaching here and he's reminding us that we are not only believers are we together that the scope of the sacrifice of Christ does not just make us believers but that in addition to believers we are all these a chosen generation not just a generation a select generation number two he calls us a royal priesthood a mix of kings and priests that we are both kings and we are priests remember revelations 5 and verse 10 tells us also on this and then he says we are a holy nation a nation of people and then he says we are a peculiar people then he says that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us who is the him jesus jesus who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light let's let's stay here a bit you need to understand this don't trivialize this because your victory depends on it to show forth the praises of a man who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light many of us understand what we are being called out of but we do not understand what we are being called into we have taken our time to study what we are being called out of we know we understand the length and the breadth of what he has called us out of but the bible never said that he called us out and left us he called us out of a dimension and a realm then into another one marvelous light marvelous light marvelous light this statement marvelous light is what qualifies us to be called a chosen generation please listen a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that means take away the experience of marvelous light we cannot be all of this the presence and our access to this mystery that the bible calls marvelous light are we together now you need to understand that this marvelous light we are talking about um light in scripture is symbolic of illumination knowledge truth are we together so when the bible says marvelous light here it means a body of knowledge finite spiritual knowledge please you have to understand this it doesn't just mean any spiritual knowledge that means there is an exact combination of spiritual knowledge that is equal to marvelous light just because you gather any spiritual truth it doesn't equal marvelous light it may equal light but there is a spiritual combination hidden here that if you possess that body of knowledge and you apply it you must reflect these possibilities a manifestation of a life that is a chosen generation a peculiar personality are we together they will see the king priest dimension working in its apex marvelous light that's a secret there marvelous light my accessing the light you know when i started out with the lord i thought that every truth of the kingdom was equally valuable and it seemed like a sin to believe that some truths you know people say truth is truth that is true in terms of the origin and the purity of it but in terms of its stratification and its assignment no sir no sir there are many lights but there are two great lights it is possible to have 10 of certain information but you can have one of another kind of information and just that one that you have will surpass by far the effect that will be in your life by accessing these things so please you need to understand that you are not just growing because you are encountering truth you have to grow when you encounter certain kinds of truth designed to produce an effect in your spiritual life all scripture the bible says is written by the holy ghost is profitable it says holy men wrote as they were moved by the spirit is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction in righteousness and so on and so forth so any dimension of truth you find in scripture will have some value to your life 
but as far as being exceptional remember you are mandated to show the praises of god that means that the gospel rendition of this is let your light so shine before men that they might see your good deeds and glorify notice how god continues to desire the praise and the glorification that not just comes from singing comes from a standard of excellence and a standard of life that the saints emit and the secret to that possibility is marvelous light there are many believers who want to be great there are many believers who want to be anointed there are many believers who want to go far there are many believers who want to have influence and we continue to guess around spiritual principles that we think may lead us to these truths and here and there there are books that are written across and they seem to supply some level of value but let me tell you this one of the greatest blessings that can happen to a believer is that you find a man or you find a platform that handpicks the spiritual principles that are allocated for your victory and feeds you with it like you have a plethora you have a buffet of spiritual principles and not all of them believe me now please don't misunderstand what i'm saying not all of them have equal value as far as your relevance and your producing glory is concerned no there are certain truths that if you don't know regardless of the ones you know it will still look like jesus is not lord over your life just because you cooked well and you didn't put salt or something it may look well but it would taste not the way it's supposed to taste are we together now yes there are many believers who continue to pride in the fact that they are accumulating spiritual information and many of the information that that is being accumulated number one it's not been vetted number two it's not arranged systematically do you know that truth does not just bless the arrangement the order of truth matters like a spiritual house look at this room for instance imagine that we pick the zinc and we put it immediately after the foundation you don't have a house the order and the arrangement matters it is in the arrangement that the house is produced just because you have the materials the spiritual combination of these truths to the end that it produces this is where many believers default so here and there we can say i know this i know this i know that but at what point in your spiritual journey do you need this are we together so when truths are dispensed we are not just giving you head knowledge we are also arranging it and rearranging it so that it can now be useful and productive to our lives if you're with me please say amen. amen there are people today who have been around church for a long time but they may never be anointed because of how they were taught never never they may never walk in the anointing because of how they were taught now the same thing you know about the anointing they have been taught but the arrangement will not produce the anointing in their lives there are believers for instance the the moment they get born again the next subject they hear is prosperity and money that kind of arrangement is not only bad it's dangerous now that is truth but because of the way it was arranged you cannot call it marvelous light it will it will create a lopsided christian a lost driven christian are we together the language of sacrifice the language of service will not be in the dictionary of that kind of christian the entire scope of his understanding about god is someone who just blessed us to enjoy and that's not a good philosophy because when you sell that idea to that believer eventually when things do not change and things do not square up he will leave god in a heartbeat because you have told him that the primary purpose for his encounter with christ 
it's just for him to enjoy now that does not mean that this dimension is not in the dealings of god but it's too early there are things that the believer needs to know and appreciate before the subject of prosperity comes in there are many believers today who keep shouting oh god why me is because they have not been taught they have been taught that when believers face challenges it is proof that they don't have faith you see that's why i'm saying it's important you are taught so when they lose loved ones or something tragic happens like the dear lady who said armed robbers came to their house i hope you know that's not a muslim that's a christian many christians today cannot explain when something very sad and tragic happens to people who love god they search around and the arrangement of the doctrine that was given them does not allow an explanation to certain situations i don't know if you are following me tonight so when the man of god comes now there is a dead body lying there and they say what happened my father served the lord he even died serving jesus and then the man of god is is in confusion right now because all you have taught them and the way you have taught them is that whatsoever happens that is negative listen very carefully in it god cannot be praised and you have to be blamed and all of that and all of that and he cannot find glory in anything that is negative that believer is confused i love god my father loved god my mother loved god but he still died but there is something you can teach that believer that like job you can teach him that the true victory of a believer sometimes is not in what you have gotten but in your love for god even when you don't get some things that they are all called faith that faith is not always about things coming it takes faith to lose things too by faith abel offered it's not always about coming our concept of faith is that things must come but I'm teaching you that there is a dimension of faith where you can lay things down. It says some women received their death to life. It says others died and didn't come back to life. And all of them, he joined it and called it faith. Are you saying that it matters how you are educated spiritually? So every time you engage your faith, it is always for things to come. Just because the Bible says faith cometh. No. Are we together yes so believers have a lot of gaps in their lives and they cannot give god praise they don't know how to joy and sorrow in persecution when a believer is persecuted he does not understand but in scripture it says count it all joy my brethren are we not bible students again when you face diverse tribulations it says knowing this that the trying of your faith so what is being tried your faith listen to what i'm telling you it's very very important you're a christian and your car breaks down and now someone stands and says where is your faith your car just broke down now please i'm a man of faith and they make you feel guilty you stand in front of that car and you are sad you are angry you are even ashamed to call a mechanic you would have called a mechanic in 30 minutes to fix that car but because your ego has been provoked you can stroll to the back of that car and lie down there and say god prove yourself you see because you have been taught that if that does not happen it's, it's a sign that you're, you are not growing spiritually our indices to measure spiritual growth is very poor and very terrible i don't know if someone is getting blessed tonight just follow what i'm teaching you there are many people who have become poor in church today because they continue to press to realms they have not gotten to as a proof that they are people of faith because something about our teaching has jumped the law of process and so we teach people that if it is god yes jehovah sharp sharp is alive but let me tell you the way the tree grows i mean the dealings of god in our environment should teach us how god builds when a woman carries seed no matter how anointed she is including mary jesus grew slowly in mary's stomach 
not even his being the word suddenly made him an adult and he said mary i want to come out he grew slowly so it is spiritual to subscribe to the law of process so you find people under pressure i must buy this car this year i must buy this cloth this year i must go around 10 countries this year and sometimes we lost driven men of god help to endorse this kind of futile agenda oh let me pray for you if you don't go around 10 countries this year you are not a christian if you don't do this you are not a christian and we propose please don't get me wrong i'm not saying that god cannot make for these things remember it's our year of extraordinary fruitfulness it is true that there are truths when you know they will set you free there are things when you don't know you will remain in bondage forever hallelujah so if you see a brother now with his 200 naira trouser his 1000 naira shirt you know if god tells you that brother is a man of faith you will not believe because our definition of faith is that the results must be there to show and it's very dangerous because there are people who are doing well but they leave their well-doing and compromise on that understanding because they are searching for results there are many wealthy people who don't have faith but simply because of the abundance of physical results you may think that that already means a lot of faith let me tell you this it matters how you are taught the ways of god it matters the beauty of your life will not come just because you have truth it must be arranged to be profitable when all else fell for job he had a solid foundation you know many times when we read the book of job we don't understand the entire scope do you know what it meant for job to be there and those who once depended on him will pass and look at him and say my god look at this man look at your wife look at your useless life dogs are licking your sores didn't i teach you that when god is silent he's speaking and that you must learn what he's saying when he's silent god why are you not talking and god replies and says understand what i'm saying when i'm silent it is a voice hallelujah let me tell you this i truly live a very peaceful life and the peace that is in my life has come from knowledge there are things that i have learned and i have known about god that has culminated to stability and rest this sabbath you see you don't enter into it just haphazardly there is a body of knowledge that will bring you into your sabbath and you can rest you can lie down in a boat that is boisterous and like jesus you are sleeping you can stand before goliath and know goliath is going down what do you know about this jesus that we celebrate and his word that can stand the times and the days that are coming then let's flip to the positive side what do you know about the word that is responsible for results in your life if i ask you to stand up today at random and i say tell me the principles you know in the dealings of god with men that provide for results what will you say i wish i had the time would have run a mic just on three or four people just at random and i say are you a believer yes born again yes filled with the holy spirit yes you can even pray in tongues let's see if you want to and then i'll now ask you i'll say now with with yours with your knowledge become a lecturer become a mentor in five minutes and coach us on the pathway to victory how do you guide a person who needs restoration in his life what do you know about god what is the system in the kingdom that is allocated for that outcome or are you just going to guess and hope and say well just pray i know prayer answers prayer is the key 
prayer is the master key jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer he was in the temple he was not praying he was studying there were many times he did other things prayer is a key not the key a key there are many other keys and if all you have is one key you will only enter one part of a house and sometimes that even that house that part you enter may not be where you are looking for if you have the key to a toilet and you are hungry you are in trouble you have a key but there is nothing in a toilet that will solve your current predicament are we together and sometimes the way you open the door to a kitchen is not the way you you can just turn it once and the door of a toilet is open but sometimes the door of a kitchen may require opening up and down then you push systematically if you don't know it there is bread in the kitchen so god will tell you there is bread in the kitchen but you are dying of hunger because of understanding you know if we spend half the time my brothers and my sisters that we use shadow boxing and guessing around and become like mary martha martha you are worried and upset about many things but one thing is needful to just stay and say lord show me this thing show me this thing it may take time but guide me spirit of the living god you are here to guide me any spiritual knowledge that does not translate eventually into your victory are we together now and the advancement of god's kingdom and your progressive knowledge of god is completely useless completely useless just because it is spiritual in context does not mean it's useful to your life and your destiny hallelujah so what do you know and what do you not know the entire prayer and fasting will be a time of dishing out spiritual truths let me tell you there is no hope for a man who rejects the understanding of the ways of god that is a truly hopeless man there's nothing you can do even deliverance i've taught you there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted it is preached it said to preach deliverance to the captives so there is a dimension of deliverance that is preached it is not the demon that needs to hear that message it is you there is a particular part of deliverance that is for the demon it's not for you so the demon hears the conversation and he's supposed to respond to it but there is a dimension that is for you you are the one who should hear god calls both deliverance so if it's only the demon that is hearing you are still in trouble because both the demon and you should hear something eventually preach deliverance to the captives so if i cast out that devil and it leaves you and you remain like that i guarantee you my brothers and my sisters you will never be sustainably free and it takes a long time to build conviction don't think one conference is enough to impart conviction it took a long time for the build up of the error to stay in our minds it takes a long time I now understand why great men like Kenneth E. Hagin and all these fathers of faith will stay around certain subjects for many years. They were creating convictions. Notice that some of the churches that we admire the widespread spiritual understanding is because of a level of focus and intentional teaching of certain dimensions of the kingdom again and again so that the average member can come into that comprehension and come into that understanding we continue to make ourselves victims i'm sharing my heart with you because as i look around you know people just as powerful as you know people like uh, Ima, Ima came to share that he went to stand near my wall to touch that there's a dimension of god's grace there but you see the truth is that a day will come you will be somewhere where you you it has to be your personal knowledge of god nigerian believers are very lazy 
we like to connect with things that quickly bring acceleration it's a system of god's mercy to help you receive results while you learn because if god waits for the result to reflect your current knowledge you may never grow so he gives you an opportunity to tap into possibilities that are higher than your level of transformation so that while you are enjoying the result you can take time to grow because he knows that growth takes time so just because you are receiving results by partnering with a grace it is not a license to remain spiritually down you have to rise so that one day it is your own grace and walk with God that will help another believer. Imagine if Jacob stopped at the God of Isaac and the God of Abraham. Today we will be robbed of a dimension that his knowledge of God has provided for us. Are we together? Spiritual knowledge that we are a peculiar people because of this the one pursuit that you must make and i'll talk a little about that shortly this year is to cry for light light illumination light light open up my eyes light my lamp god is not a herbalist He's a miracle worker, but he's not a herbalist. He will require partnership from you through understanding for you to get any results. Whatever it is that God has done in and through this ministry that is worth giving him glory for came by partnership through understanding. Faith cannot be faith until it is sponsored by understanding. The foundation of faith is understanding. You have to know the systems that are allocated for the results that you desire. Then when you are convicted about it, then you act in accordance to what has been told you. And then you will receive results. Very, very important. Luke chapter 19 from verse 41. One of the two reasons why Jesus wept jesus did not just weep in the grave of lazarus alone but jesus wept and when he was come near he beheld the city now he sees beholding a city and did what wept over it now if jesus is crying over something you need to find out what he's crying about next verse saying this is why he's weeping if thou has known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto your peace this is why jesus is crying he says but now they are hid from your eyes imagine jesus looking at you and crying and saying i wish you knew this i wish you knew this i wish you knew this have you i don't know if this has happened to you that you misplaced something or maybe you are looking for your handkerchief and it's on your shoulder and you are going from room to room in anger and waiting to see someone with it so that you will injure the person suddenly you will find out that it was that person was you the things that pertain unto your peace the things that pertain unto your peace so there are things that pertain unto peace there is a science to your peace there are equations that make for your peace your peace there talks of your prosperity your greatness your health your longevity your well-being the things not the thing the things is a body of knowledge that pertain unto your peace it says but now they are hid from you there is what you can know and your church will never remain small it doesn't matter the darkness in the land it is your knowledge there is what you know that you will never beg forever till jesus comes it is true sponsored by knowledge there is what you will know that will command favor and the help of men to your life forever there is what you know that it doesn't matter the negative things that happen to you there is a system to turn it around for your good Jesus wept over that city. 
let me show you a scripture isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2 isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2 please read it with me the people that walked in darkness have seen a not just a light and then he says they that dwell in the land of the sh how can a man dwell here is that an a habitable place he said but there are people that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them what happened the light shined notice that the solution to this category of people is light those who walked in darkness a version says they that sat in darkness sat in darkness sitting is a state of rest that means you are not even aware that it is darkness until the light comes he says they have seen a great light and then he says that those that have dwelt in the land of the shadow of death upon them light has shined that means every time there is darkness in your life and you cry god answers you the official way of answering prayer is sending light that's how god sends light his anointing is in his light if you reject his light you will never never access the power that helps people please understand what i'm teaching apostle why are things going on like this in my life the answer will be light there is a dimension of god's light why will my finances not rise there is a dimension of light why am i not excelling in life and ministry there is a dimension of light so when god wants to help a man let me show you how he helps a man his light comes come my dear and he brings you out he brings you out watch this he's bringing you out of darkness the coming of his light is your deliverance no matter what happens to you if light has not come you are not free if you like go out once there is no light you are not free spiritual illumination as god's system of deliverance he said i am the light of the world then later on he says ye are the light of the world that means we help the world not just by building structures but by introducing an understanding listen the assignment of believers is not just to build physical structures remember the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom the first you help men not just by doing physical things please listen to me if i give this guy one thousand naira money is physical and anything physical is finite you help this brother by introducing lights are we together now when the light of god comes it is able to translate this gentleman and activate possibility in it, possibilities in his life so you knew him to be someone who is standing here remember years ago this gentleman was holding his admission letter and today he's a doctor authorized to be able to handle whatever situation within the level of his knowledge light there are some dimensions that even as a doctor he cannot handle now if another kind of light comes it will move him forward we move forward by light we move forward my brothers and my sisters by light we increase by light so when satan wants to destroy you what do you think is the easiest way to destroy you to find a way to do something to the light or to do something to you the easier one is to do something to you so that you can make the word of god of non-effect are we together now this is what has happened to so many people there are people who will hear the things i'm saying now and think that oh this is it really important but look at the situations in their life do you know let me tell you my brothers and my sisters in as much as we continue to pray here at the miracle service and i will keep doing it all my life and with all my heart but let me tell you the sustainable way of victory is to command your result by knowledge when you obtain a result that was not sponsored by knowledge you will fear the result because you know it will not last are we together now yes 
so this gentleman is here at the mercy of light this dear lady is here at the mercy of light my brother is here at the mercy of light oh god change my life and god says then open up your heart to light and if satan wants to confuse you and sees that you have made up your mind to get light he can bring not the light you need he will allow light come but it's not the light that will solve your problem so you can get a book and be reading and learning mm, wow you are nodding your head but you still remain there and you find out that the light you are receiving now is not needed for the situation illumination they that walked in darkness have seen a great light a great light let's look at a parable that jesus gave uh, and then we'll come back here jesus gave a very interesting parable luke chapter 15 please luke chapter 15 from verse 8 to 10. notice if you read the entire luke chapter um, 15 it 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 reveals the kingdom as something that was missing and found missing and found three parables were in that luke chapter 15 including that of the prodigal son so the and it it now gives the kingdom a similitude of something that was lost and then found something that was lost and then found this is one of the parables it says either what woman having 10 pieces of silver and if she lose one dot not what look at how the woman is approaching a problem now once upon a time she had 10 pieces of silver and then one got missing it's a representation of a dimension and look at how the woman recovers she does not just go around carelessly she knows it is somewhere but she needs to be specific she lights a candle and then she will use the light of the candle to do what to start sweeping the house and seek diligently by light till she finds it and seek diligently sweeping is not alone it's not enough you must seek diligently passionately lord there has to be a way you open scripture and you are crying out your heart and then light comes there's one thing i know about light when your light comes you must arise it is true it is true if you remain in a position the solution is not the strength of satan my brothers and my sisters the solution is light or enough light she has 10 pieces of silver she loses one and what happens she lights a candle neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel this woman is going around i must find the coin i thought she has nine more the same way if she doesn't master how to find coins the ninth one will lose the eighth one are you seeing the deception i like this woman whoever she is is a wise woman you don't wait till you have two coins left before you will not have the motivation to find it the moment one was missing she said i won't give life a chance whatever made the first one fall will make the second one fall until i master how to find it now the woman found what was missing let me tell you how satan deceives us one area of your life may not be doing well and many areas are doing well and you say it doesn't matter you won't give it the diligence then another area is not doing well it doesn't matter i won't give it diligence then another area is not doing well it doesn't matter are you seeing usually the areas you are focusing on satan will not touch it first he will touch the areas you will run to when he touches that one when he's done then eventually something happens and you turn and find out that eight or nine areas are gone but there are people when one thing is not going on well your bible lord there has to be light there must be a way there must be a way revelations don't just come when you pray revelation comes when you stay you stay prayer alone does not bring you see there are many people let me tell you this any successful person will tell you there is a place of diligence and there is the labor dimension of god's word i wish that anything you are looking for you will just find overnight no there are times that your time will be years will be months will be many years 
but no matter how long it is stay because when you find it the world will know you have found it it is costly to assume you have found it be sure early that you have found it because you may assume you have found it until life needs it and you cannot bring it out you have not found it they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh are we together now this is a very powerful scripture and i want you to learn that when people are sitting in darkness the solution the solution you know i travel quite extensively to go and minister many times when i get to a place with within the level of the grace that god has given me i can know what the problem is within minutes i know you can look at a man and know what his problem is and know what the solution is and if that person is not willing to take the solution then your heart breaks there are people today who come for counseling some of you join the queue for counseling you are standing for counseling and you are trying to tell me what is wrong apostle a b c and like a doctor i already know this is a problem and usually i can tell them okay get one two three koinonia messages and listen to and i just touch their head and you see the anger the annoyance sometimes you know they are expecting to touch me i didn't fall i didn't do anything i will tell the person get this and that message usually they will start moving as if they are going there and just turn and walk away now please don't feel bad you have tied your hands by yourself the system works with light the system works with light the system works with light nobody wins by mistake the system works with light so if you really want to be victorious your assignment is to be a student of light and this is what we are going to be doing the seven days is not just a time to pray and fast blindly is this not the kind of fast i have commanded it says then shall your light break forth shall your light break forth my brothers and my sisters we arise by light i look at my life today and i look at many things i did not know and sometimes tears just come out from my eyes imagine that i knew it and i wonder how many other things i do not know what do you know about life what do you know about men what do you know about demons what do you know about god what do you know about time what do you know about wealth what do you know about greatness what do you know about failure what do you know about darkness what do you know about light what do you know about defeat what do you know about victory what do you know about jesus what do you know about satan that's where the victory lies so a believer can be mentored to become victorious not to become a church member meaning i can pick these three people right now and say look come and i will teach you the ways of god micah chapter 4 zechariah chapter 4 that's the assignment that the mountain of the lord's house give us micah chapter 4 please that it shall come to pass in the last days listen to the assignment of the church the last days that the mountain of the lord's house micah chapter 4 shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall do what flow to it next verse it says and many nations how many nations many shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us his ways they are there in search of light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine for your light has come arise 
shine because you now know arise shine because you are no longer in ignorance arise shine because the power and the fear that comes with ignorance is broken amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light arise from the depression the prostration which circumstances have kept you they kept you through darkness they didn't press you physically they did something to your spiritual understanding and kept you there 80 percent of jesus's ministry was teaching notice how he made apostles he did not just make apostles there were times early in the morning they would go to pray but for three days all of you come up the mountain and he will continue to teach he didn't finish the curriculum when he resurrected he would have said everybody this is jesus back to life he said students quickly let's go we have my time i need to sit with you we have 40 more days to round up the course and for 40 days he kept teaching them teaching them on the matters of the kingdom when he was done he said tarry just 10 days you are good to go till today he has not seen a need to come back and say i failed when you give men light you really empower them when you give people money you give them donation when you give people clothes you give them charity but when you give them light you have really helped them giving is not only giving money money is not the only thing to be given the most useful thing to be given and that's how you know whether you'll be great or not if the things you like getting are physical you will not go far you must get the things that bring the physical things light show me someone who is in complete ignorance but will sit down and cry to the god of heaven and say lord i confess my ignorance show me show me open my eyes he said open down my eyes that i may behold that means that this kind of seeing god must open your eyes education cannot give you this kind of light it can prepare your mind to receive but only when god takes off the veil you won't know there is a veil till he takes it off and then you say my god this is it this is it i found my way i found my way as haphazard as life is the knowledge of the ways of god you begin to connect the dots and see that i thought it was haphazard but there is a rhythm that synergizes life ask any great man ask anybody who god is using mightily they will be lying if they don't if they tell you they don't know what they are doing it's not true it's not true my passion let me tell you my passion is to continue to dispense this light just letting you know that light will lift you is not enough i must bring the specific light what is the light this is your book what is responsible for bringing this book back to your hands number one is it possible yes you see that but what is the system design remember this is the book he's looking for but he doesn't know how to pick this book between you and this book there is a mystery there is a light that must connect you you can stand and see the book forever and not get it and sometimes you don't just need to listen to god alone you need to listen to the person who has picked his own how dare you trivialize the person that picked his own Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God. You are my God, and I will ever praise you. I 
will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you. Listen, let me tell you what is happening to you in Koinonia keys are given to you get me a bunch of keys if you can find any you will get to a point my brothers and my sisters listen you will get to a point in your life and your destiny when you will know that life is many rooms and all those rooms need keys look at this this is a bunch of keys this is what god is giving you You've gotten three already, but he said that you need to open 70 rooms to succeed. So you now have three. You need to catch up. But you keep dangling three and say, I have three. And he says, those three rooms are just toilets. I need to give you keys. Listen, these are the ones that will reign in life. They who have paid the price. Lord, my child can be a bad boy. So let me know in advance what is the key to restore a defaulting child. It may be too late. You don't get the key when you have the child. You get the key before you have the child. I don't pray that any armed robber will steal your car. But what if he steals the car? What is the key? So God continues. Look at what you are doing. He gives you a candle and he says keep sweeping and you are sweeping from one meeting to the other you are sweeping sometimes you say god i'm tired i've been sweeping for 10 years and i've just found four keys god will say a time will come you will find a bunch in one place you will not always pick one by one there are times when you, you will see many keys in one place let me tell you i submit to you this is what i've spent my life doing I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. Show me the keys. What are the keys to the anointing? I know I need this for ministry. I need this for life. And he says, hold the light and keep sweeping. You sweep from Genesis to Revelation, you start again. 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 You don't sweep once. Listen. So while you are sweeping, you will find a key. Sometimes you will not know that what you are looking at is a key till you come back to sweep again. All the keys don't look the same. Listen, listen to me. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. It is not, it is not every key that appears as a key. You will look at some keys and they don't look like it. And the Spirit of God will say, pick it. When you see the kind of door that this key will open, you will know. Let me tell you how you prepare for life. You hold your keys. And then when you begin to walk, you will see people who went ahead of you standing before certain doors. You, you thought they went ahead, but there they are marking time. They only open two doors out of 50. And they are standing. And God says, now remember the key I gave you in 95. Bring it out. Open this door. Remember the key I gave you in 2001. During your retreat, I gave you a small key. Now, this is the small door that the key opens. For step by step, you lead me. And I will fall on my doors. For step it has been given unto you to know to know the keys of the kingdom this is what we do business with in this kingdom the keys our fathers who are gone ahead of us are called fathers because of this 
where you check them some of them the keys they have they can't hold it again they have looked for bags and when they see you sometimes they look at you and say i know this door i saw it before when i was 27 i saw the door let me tell you how the key looks like so when you read their books and listen to them that's what you are doing they are helping to show you the key let me tell you how satan cheats you sometimes he makes you think the keys you hold are not keys and you throw them and the thing is when you throw them if you are starting with god you will go back you have to remember where you threw them and start sweeping again koinonia hear me you may not have the car yet but you have the key you may not have the house yet but you have the key man of god hear me you have not started the church yet but these are your members hidden in the keys that you hold listen this is a very ancient secret that god taught me stay stay on my word don't just be educated in terms of knowledge that pops up learn it i remember when i found the law of encounter wow this is the law that controls the power of god i remember when i found the law of honor it blew my mind the master key there are I will, ah, why did i go ahead of myself because i will show you that there are master keys when you don't find some keys you can use some keys to find the ones you are missing yes sir they are called master keys master keys master keys you find these keys and sometimes the door that will open is the door that your child's life depends on it's not every door that relates to you directly some doors are the keys that will feed your family some doors are the keys that will preserve you this is what god gave joseph he said joseph take this let me tell you this look at me those of us waiting for god to just bring physical things to bless you i like you to be matured and think like a believer thank god for miracle a lot but if that's all you are waiting for you are not thinking well this is it i commend you I, look he's, he's teaching you he's saying look stop wasting your time i hand you over to god and to the word of his grace number one it is able to build you so that you are stable immovable unshakable then number two you will find keys here and you will pick them up you will get to some of these doors and find people who were standing there before you were born they are still there standing at those doors and knocking and knocking and here you come from nowhere that's how you show forth his praises because many of them will be saying this door cannot open we've been at this door from 1951 and here comes a warm jacob empowered by light and you turn it it may be an old door but you swing it open a time will come when they notice that you have mastered the art of opening doors then gentiles will come to your light you will no longer look for them listen this is the cure for complex this is the cure for complex no amount of good clothes good hair good anything can give you what this will give you the real secret of confidence is the holy spirit living in you and the dexterity of the spiritual knowledge that you hold they may persecute you but let's get to a door keep talking while we get to a door keep bragging while we get to a door keep making noise while we get to keep mocking god let us just get to a door every mockery ends when you stand before a door because only a key opens that door some of you are giving diligence to what you are doing now and you may not know what you are doing listen to me my brothers and my sisters people may laugh at you and mock at you you've been in koinonia for five years you have nothing to show no job no husband no money no no ministry no business no nothing and sometimes you feel guilty 
you have the keys you have just not reached the door and so you continue moving and then one day when you open that door when god is ready to announce you he can fast track 10 years of your life by keeping you on stage and you say son turn the key that opens the door to the anointing and on that day those who knew you will say from whence did this come and you say i found a key god gave me a key from that one meeting you may never rest again with the open doors that come open doors are only open because of the keys that open them they that walked in darkness it says arise from the depression lack of light can bring real depression not just medical depression a state where nothing works in a man's life but many of us ignore the keys and we are chasing shadows if only my uncle gave me five thousand i will never beg again if only um i wear a nice cloth they will think if only i do this and that and god says look 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 you may be in that one room but carry keys keys colonia this is what god is going to be doing these seven days keys some of you threw some keys you had and god is going to be bringing you restoration more than restoration of a property or restoration of a this and that this is the real restoration the keys of the kingdom let me tell you fear a man who has held this there is no power there is no enchantment there is no devil that will throw such a one you keep watching that man your eyes will only keep going higher because of the power of this There are families that do not have even one key. They are not born again. Listen to me. From traditional worship, this is where they stand. Father does not have a key. Mother does not have a key. Sister does not have a key. There are some of you who want to get into ministry, no key. I'm called. I'm anointed. They poured oil on my head, but were keys given to you. You just get up and your first assignment requires 10 keys. And you stand there stupefied with no keys. You are not ready for life when you do not have keys. No matter how you think you are ready. Listen, while we prepare to start tomorrow, you are going to have to cry. Which key don't I have? Be honest and be sincere. Tonight's meeting is a charge. Have I found the key to the grace of God? Have I found the key to the favor of God? Have I found the key? Hallelujah. You can hear like, like Imam was sharing. There was a key that he found. So when trouble came, they would have killed that person for nothing. And he engaged that key don't wait until they give you a report before you start checking and then you say ah i don't have the key is someone challenged tonight brothers learn this key life is harsh let me tell you sincerely i don't mean to discourage you what gives ease to life is the keys that you hold Woe betides a man that steps into life not holding any key. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I search for these keys and I continue to search for them. And when you find them, they are life to those who find them. They are life. To those who find them you need diligence you need diligence my brothers and my sisters who are going to pray you need diligence the keys are not just at plain sight sometimes you may need to search and search and search and search and search and lie down there there are times that the holy spirit will have to be the one to come and say look turn your eyes look there that's the key 
some of these keys cannot be found by the eyes of men it will take the holy spirit to open your eyes for this cause i bow my knees ephesians chapter 1 please give it to us and verse 17 he's praying for the church ephesians chapter 1 that the god of our lord jesus christ paul is praying the father of glory may give unto you what the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened some versions say being flooded with light that you may know that you may know that you may know that's the key that you may know because what you do not know will keep you where you are forever you would think that life will just move you forward automatically you will never move forward automatically not in ministry not in career whatever it is even if there are attacks there is what you will need to know for your victory victory will not just come if it would just come like that some of our loved ones would have been free step by step you are leading me and i will follow you all of my days step by step you lead me and i will follow you as i travel for meetings and i see the wonder working power of spiritual knowledge and the anointing of the holy spirit i am grateful to god but sometimes i ask the question what if i didn't have the key do you know someone will die if you don't get this key and that someone may be you it may not always be someone around you arise shine arise shine give god glory john chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible says there was a man sent from god his name was john it says the same came for a witness verse 7 that he came to bear witness to the truth are we together now and that all men might through his witness believe all men might through that witness believe there are people who will never believe in jesus until they see your light i've been preparing myself for these seven days lord what do i not know thank god for what i know but i need the one that i do not know if you have 30 over 100 you got 30 but you failed you didn't get zero but you didn't get enough to pass so ignore the 30 and focus on the 70. Even if you have 80 over 100. You see in this kingdom, it is worth the 10. Sometimes the one key you don't have can rubbish all the other keys that you have. One key. Hezekiah was at the point of death. Chapter 38 of Isaiah. The word of the Lord came to Isaiah the son of Amos. Go and tell Hezekiah to put his house in order. He will not recover from the sickness. A real prophet. And Hezekiah said, man of God, I honor you. I obey you. You can go. And he turned his face. When you know what to do, you can listen to people and say, I've heard you. May God bless you. When you close the door, you pick your keys. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There is a name. Ah! blind Bartinius. he had been trying many things but not the key people will pass and he say help me wicked people he didn't open the door one day he learned about the mercy of god and he said come now let that opportunity come as soon as jesus was passing jericho for the last time he no longer said help me he said thou son of david have mercy the moment jesus had that mercy he said, ah the cross the cross mercy because when you call mercy jesus must stand mercy 
what should I do for you that I might see and that was it that man would have died there thou son of David do you know when to call him Jesus and when to call him the son of David do you know what occasion necessitates thou son of David have mercy on me I want to walk in exact knowledge I want to walk in knowledge spiritual knowledge worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain and he has redeemed them us now unto God he says I I beheld and I saw a lamb that had been slain weep not he said for the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David is worthy qualified to open the book and unlock the scroll it says and when i looked i saw a lamb that had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes seven eyes seven eyes the spirit of god providing for perfect revelation seven eyes seven eyes seven eyes apostle when will i rise the day the light to lift you comes will i rise in august if you want to will i rise this april if you want to will i rise in may if you want to the choice is yours your addiction to his light is what culminates to your rising please hear me as i preach to you time will never change anything it will take light the entrance of thy word give it light not just knowledge light and then understanding to the simple hallelujah something happened to me today that almost brought tears and i said god how many people may never 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 be able to experience certain dimensions of your hand simply because of this light that they do not know you know many times when i'm praying truly speaking i think in the last one month my prayer life now i don't even know what to say again many times i just kneel down and tears just come out of my eyes thank you thank you for knowledge thank you for knowledge thank you for knowledge thank you for taking away ignorance you for taking away ignorance separating me from darkness it's the power of God is someone willing to pray tonight Lord I'm tired of where I am I don't want to lie to myself again I'm tired of this realm there is a dimension in God that he seeks to bring me this can't be it God is so much bigger than this. Oh, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. One more time. This can be for you. God is so much. Listen. Was it not ignorance that caused Cain? If Cain knew how to do it well, he would have gotten it. Cain did it, but he did it wrongly. God is no respecter of persons, but he will respect his ordinances forever. There is something we do not know. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Until you have a broken and a contrite heart. Say Lord I've seen this and I thank you. But open my eyes in this area. Is someone desperate to cry tonight? Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Oh, 
open my eyes. chapter 3 and verse 4. Please give us an amplified. It's a popular scripture here. You know it. Let's start from verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. It says, God coming from Teman, you know, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. It says, and His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of His praise. Verse 4 very powerful scripture it says and his brightness was like the sunlight rays streamed from his hand and there in that light was the hiding place of his power God's power is hidden in his light remember the teaching last week his divine power has given us all things but that divine power comes at the instance of the light so grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge the greater your knowledge the greater your exact spiritual illumination that is the depth and the dimension of power that you will command the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can call darkness light for many years please open your mouth and cry and say lord damage darkness from my life drive it far from my life drive it far from my life Take away darkness from my life. Take away darkness, oh God, from my life. What are you turning to? Listen. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? That's a prayer now. Open the eyes of the light. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you rise And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you Not like you We're entering strange seasons of performance My God is greater My God is stronger But you are higher than the enemy Is 
is my season. I know it is my season because I am ready for life. I know it is my season, next level of ministry because of light. I know it is my season because of light. It is not your season just because of prophecy. It is your season because of light. It's my season because I'm ready to receive light. Shabakato Paragosiata. The light that terminates darkness. The light that will set me above. The light of truth. The light of life. The light of speed. The light of grace. The light of a new one. Enough, it's time to rise. It's time to rise with a testimony that everyone will know that this is the finger of God. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. You know, there's more than sound in you. It's in you. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more than sound in you.
So how do I know that this prayer and fasting is ushering into a new season? Because of the light that is coming. And because of what you will do with it. Your heart must be prepared to receive it. Listen. Just one spiritual law that is well understood can turn your life around. Allah will turn your life around. is not true. It says, then shall your light break forth. You have been looking, but now you will see that this is it. I've heard about it with the hearing of my ears, but now my eyes have seen it. Now my eyes will see it. Now my eyes will see it. Now my eyes will see it. And I will walk in it. It will no longer be miracle alert. One moment after another. But you enter into a dimension called the world in place. It will no longer be one demonstration of the Holy Spirit as told by death work. But you enter into a realm of mercy. Mercy. God is damaging ignorance. Transiting you from being general and putting you in a spectacular position that everyone that sees you will know that you are called by the name of God. It may not look like it, but my brothers and sisters, don't forget that this is God we are talking about. God is changing every in my life. God is starting something new in my life. He won't stop, he won't stop Till I'm the moon, moon just like him He won't stop, no, he won't stop Till I lie, moon as I do God is doing Listen, listen to me I like you to curse the spirit of destruction Destruction is a wicked spirit you will listen to every other thing but the word that will lift you. He said he sends forth his word. The word is a messenger. It will be coming to people. A buffet of big mysteries in the kingdom. Lift your voice and cause destruction. Tomorrow. There 
there are a number of things in the Bible that can fight the world. One of it is called the traditions of men. It says you have made the world of none effect through the tradition. Tradition. You don't have the flexibility to adjust. This is always how I've been taught. This is how I know it. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Lord, do something to my wine skin that will give way so that a new wine skin will come. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of the old wine skin. I've exhausted the results that come with the old wine skin. Are you praying? New wine. New wine. New wine. In my wine skin. New wine. Look up, please. Number two, unbelief. They had the word just like it says, there remained a rest for the people of God. It says, in that day, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Unbelief. 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 You hear the word of God and all kinds of contemplations begin to come. Give us Romans chapter 4, please. Romans chapter 4. We are praying. We are preparing our hearts for tomorrow. Romans chapter 4. Let's study Father Abraham in one minute and learn from him the principles that make for true faith. Abraham. From verse... 17 as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations you are going to be hearing things like this but the bible says before whom he believed even god who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were 18 18 who against hope some of you are going to have to believe and hope against hope because the things God will tell you to, to do or the things God will tell you will come back to life are already dead and have been long dead and yet God will tell you they will come back to life. He believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according as that which was spoken. Next verse 19. He says, and not being weak in faith, he considered not this is not a week to start considering. Okay, now that prophecy is coming, that this will happen, let me calculate. If only my uncle called me, no, that one is not faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Next verse. He staggered not. You believe now, and then as soon as you share the grace, you are just with someone and he says, oh boy, we only said amen no even me god knows i don't believe it you are staggering vacillations of your convictions you believe this today and by tomorrow you change but we are strong in faith giving glory to god lord i challenge unbelief as a spirit every word that is coming from you i i i i obtain the faith to receive it lift your voice and those outside please pray those online pray i receive the faith number three pride pride the bible says i receive with meekness the engrafted word there is a spiritual quality required to receive meekness pride can destroy 
pride can destroy you're going to pray and say lord my heart is open to learn i receive the heart of a student in this school of the spirit teach me i'm not too proud to learn teach me lift your voice and pray limitation your mind your belief system they limited god in the wilderness they limited god by saying can god make a table in the wilderness let me tell you this there are some of you please give me this cup there are some of you this is what you plan to bring for the prayer and fasting a small cup like this lord i know you you are like the man with one talent you are a hard man i know you you are not a giver you don't have the hearts to lavishly give so i brought a small cup to receive he will fill the cup there are other people who will bring a drum and say lord i know you can feel it there are other people who will buy a host and hang it and say lord i'm plugging it from you to me not even a drum like plugging it to God and plugging it to myself and let everything that can flow flow even in the good soil it gave three kinds of results 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold it is not the sower it is the heart that the seed fell on Lord it must be 100 fold this time around it must be 100 fold I will not be blessed on day three, day five, and day six. I will be blessed from day one to the last day. Last prayer point. Lord, as I'm standing in this conference, every one of my family members, I connect through the power of the bloodline. They must be part of this testimony. Listen, listen. If you are blessed alone, you are still not free. You have to pray that they too may be saved. That God will also bring them. He says, for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children. As many as are far off, even they that the Lord will call. The promise is for everybody. Not for a few people. So we are going to pray. If you can mention your loved ones by name, I'd like you to mention them and say, Lord, they must be part of this conference in the spirit. As I'm standing, I also agree for a visitation for them. I agree for a visitation for them. I agree for a visitation for them. Call them by name. Those who are not born again, this is the week that they must encounter Jesus Christ. Those who are wallowing in ignorance, sincere but ignorant, this is the season, oh God. 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 Are you praying? This is the season. Your voice from the depth of your heart and pray. Shabbat Shalom, celebrate the day. This way, you are preparing your heart. The last scripture for tonight, Genesis 21, verse 1 and 2. May this be someone's testimony. 
Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. Let's read it together. 1 to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as had said. And the Lord did to Sarah as he has spoken. Next verse. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. At when the set time which the Lord had spoken. There is a set time. That's the key word. It's not just that the answer came, but that the answer came at the set time. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. This is the last prayer. Lord, I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. This is my set time. This is my set time. For those of you who travel from far, I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Those following your life, Lord, this is my set time. Do to me like you have said. Do to me like you showed me in the vision. Do to me like you spoke through your servant. Father, in the name that is above all names, we decree and we declare that these seven days will be seven days of fire. Will be seven days of true revival. Will be seven days of a strange dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom. We call them seven days of strange wonders. We call them seven days of divine visitation. Seven days of supernatural shifts. Seven days of encounters. Let me tell you sincerely, the kind of encounters that many of you will have these seven days will be what you have just had people say they used to have i have prayed this and i've agreed with god for strange angelic visitations all kinds of prophetic visitations and the angel came to daniel and gabriel came to mary the ministry of angels in this conference that God is opening you up, taking you to realms and dimensions by the Spirit. Hallelujah. We bless you. Lord, we decree and declare, let no flesh be glorified throughout this prayer time. We agree for those who are coming still on their way. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will honor yourself you will honor your name even in this prayer retreat we commit every session to your hand and lord we pray that it will be profitable in the name of jesus we obtain the grace to fast we obtain the grace to pray in the name of jesus we also obtain the grace to receive we receive the grace for open eyes we receive the grace for open ears. Amen. We receive the grace for an enlightened heart. Amen. We receive the grace for performance. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen. Give Jesus praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to make the altar call. Up front, there are people here who need Jesus and need Jesus fast. Fast. There are people who are saying, Apostle, all the while, while you were preaching, I, I was just seeing the need for Jesus in my life. 
I don't want to start this conference without Jesus. I want to maximize every moment. You are here, the main auditorium, the overflows, even online. I want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says, ye must, not may, not if you wish, you must be born again. Born again properly. You cannot start a, a retreat and a revival careless. Your eyes are blind. Your spirit is dead. You need that, that strong opening. And that only comes by salvation. And what a joy. This is Easter Friday. To commemorate and to bring souls tonight like a trophy to his majesty and say, Lord, we present to you this even on this day. There are people here. You want to maximize this Easter period. And you're saying, Apostle, I want to truly, truly come to Jesus. Or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, by the roadside, please make your way. Our space here is slim. But I'd like you to summon the courage to rise and make your way very quickly. There has to be someone. Don't be afraid. Be the first person to summon the courage to come. I believe that somebody is making this decision. God bless you if you are coming. God bless you if you are coming. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Please encourage and motivate them as they come. We are bringing joy to the heart of the Father even on this day. The devil is a liar. Don't let him keep you down. They will see you and they will laugh at you. That's the voice of the devil. Apostle, I think I'm born again. I'm not exactly sure. Join them. Join them very quickly. If you are not sure you are born again, it's a sign to join them. Will the Lord love me with everything I've done? Yes, sir. Join them. Join them. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Clear the way for them to come. Apostle, I think I'm too old. That's the voice of the devil. I think I'm too young. That's still the voice of the devil. Make your way quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I still believe that there are a few people that God is speaking to that need to come. You are just, you don't even know what your life is about right now. And you are saying, I, I just need my life back in order. Please make your way. Join them. I'm sensing it in my spirit that God is also calling this group of people. Please, quickly, quickly. If you are coming from outside, join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. Young, old, together, join them quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, the thing about getting saved is whether or not you truly make that decision, it is up to you. But you can only and will only be encouraged to come to Jesus. Jesus is not a liability to your life. He's not a nuisance to civilization. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, no man, whosoever cometh to the Father except through me. Praise the Lord. Now, for those of you who are in front, I sincerely salute you for making this decision. I want you to lift your right hand high above your head, sincerely, and I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Join them quickly, my dear. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word and I make Jesus Lord of my life. I declare that your life becomes my life and my life becomes your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I am a child of God. I belong to Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, we thank you and we honor your sacrifice even in this season by presenting to you these souls. They have come sincerely like trophies. We lift them to you in honor of the eternal sacrifice of the Lamb.
we pray that as always you will receive these ones that their confession will truly grant them access to be partakers of your divine nature i declare that the power of satan the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over your life now and forever in the name of jesus christ we declare that you are born again you are sons of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ amen a big congratulations to all of you um may i please request that you follow the gentleman there's a gentleman waving his hands all of you in concert this way just follow him and um there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline